In the 1950s, photographer Chen Zhonglie documented the feudalist Tibet of those time with his photography. The scenes in these old photographs would seem, by the standards of people today, to depict a very remote past. However, we all know this was no more than half a century ago. This was the cruel reality. The Tibet of those days was a feudal serfdom. Tibet's feudal system had been produced somewhere between the mid-9th to 13th centuries and lasted up until the 20th century. It was a backward and brutal regime. Government officials, aristocrats, and monks from the upper echelons, although making up only about 5% of the total population, owned almost all of Tibet's land, pastures, forests, and livestock. Whereas 95% or more of the population were serfs and slaves who possessed next to nothing, we can still find the old circular code in the archives of Tibet Autonomous Region. According to the laws of old Tibet, Tibetan society was divided into nine classes and three categories. Government officials, nobles, and top-ranking clergy were considered to have a superior class, legally worth their weight in gold. Whereas the value of a single human life further down on a pecking order was only equal to that of a straw rope, these were human rights under the old system in Tibet. Tibetan serfs were divided into three levels: the Chapa, Tuichun, and the Langsheng. Chapa serfs were given a piece of land to till by the feudal lords, but performed compulsory labor for the landowner as well as the Tibetan government. The Tuichun were basically small families with no land of their own. The Langsheng were slaves. Not one of the serf classes enjoyed personal freedom. The peasants who worked the land were also forced to pay taxes, but also forced to perform heavy amounts of labor exacted in lieu of taxes. They would do work for the government, such as building roads, cutting grass, chopping firewood, assisting in construction projects, transporting luggage and cargo for traveling soldiers and officials. In old Tibet, there was a proverb: "Exorbitant taxes are as plentiful as yak hair, paid out from birth to death." Young serfs had to pay a baby tax. If one wanted to become a lama, there was the temple entrance tax. If taken to prison, one would be fined an imprisonment tax. Even after one's death, family members would have to pay a burial tax. <laughs> In this way, the serfs toiled year after year, being deprived of the very fruits of their labor. Many of the land-renting serfs could not even rely on the food grown on their land to make a living. Instead, they were forced to collect and sell yak chips. Still, others were forced to live on edible wild herbs for several months at a time. Under such oppression, all of the serfs were in debt, a debt which went back countless generations. Today, the majority of middle-aged Chinese still remember this feature film. The film follows the story of an ordinary Tibetan serf. The former Wan Dui actually spent the first 17 years of his life as a Changba peasant, and then eight years as a poverty-stricken lama. Now, 
Chan Ba is a level of peasant belonging to the lower serf class, Lan Shen. Lan Shen spent their entire lives working for a master. Their children also grew up to be a Lan Shen, essentially the master's property. Masters were completely in their right to punish, abuse, sell, give away, imprison or even murder their servants as they saw fit. In the master's eyes, they were nothing more than talking beasts of burden. This is a contract of serf trading signed by Nechong Monastery. Overworked serfs were forced to flee and beg for food, and countless people died in the street. In cities and towns like Lhasa and Shikaza, old people, women and children begging for food could be seen everywhere. Before the liberation of Tibet, four to five thousand of Lhasa's near 30,000 residents were beggars. Gu In old Tibet, very barbaric and cruel punishments were still practiced, such as eye gorging, cutting off of the ears, hands and feet, and a water torture. Almost every large estate had a serf owner who would set up their own prison and produce a variety of torture instruments. I mean, the desire for and pursuit of freedom by anyone of the serf class was a serious crime. The fifth Dalai Lama once decreed, People of Lariziba, keep my words. If you again seek freedom or comfort, I've authorized your masters to cut off your hands, cut off your feet, gorge out your eyes, beat you and kill you. This order was reiterated by future authorities on many occasions. After seeing these kinds of historical records, we would simply have to say that old Tibet was in fact one of the most serious human rights violators in the world. Some of the old aristocracy were aware of the severity of this social crisis. Tibetan government official Ngapo Ngapwan Jigme, when discussing this issue with friends, believes that had things gone on the way they were, it wouldn't have been long before all of the serfs died out, leaving the upper class unable to survive, and essentially wiping out the entire civilization. So it, it was a system that was a very poor system, very unfair, uh, and what was unusual is that that continued until 1959, that system. It was probably the last example of that kind of a feudal society that existed anywhere uh, until that time. We have to understand, uh, sometimes uh, there is um, a view, which one hears mainly in Europe and America, that uh, Tibet in the time of the Dalai Lamas was a kind of paradise. This is complete nonsense. Of course.